In this presentation, we will take a look at multiple choice questions related to a job cost system. First question, labor costs in production are either A, high or low, B, indirect or hourly, C, sal salary or al hourly, D, indirect or expense, and E, direct or indirect. Okay, let's go through this again using the process of elimination. Labor costs in production are either A, high or low. Uh, that's possible. <laughs> they could be in between too, right? So labor costs within there could be high or low. This seems kind of arbitrary. Uh, you know, it might seem correct. It could be either high or low. They got to be one or the other or in between, but it, it'll seem like they're kind of made up terms. So uh, high or low doesn't seem to be the types of terms we're looking at here so let's see b says indirect or hourly um and those seem like two payroll terms they are two payroll type kind of terms but they're not um really contradictory or they, they don't seem to match indirect or hourly hourly is a type of wages indirect uh would be support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it whether it's applied to a specific job or not so i don't think it's that those don't seem to go together c says salary or hourly and those are two payroll items that that seem uh, to go together. So I would think that you know maybe that maybe that be, would be it because the, the, well, how else do we pay people either hourly or sal salary? So, and then D says indirect or expense. And again, these two don't seem to exactly go together. Indirect is a payroll kind. We apply to payroll and, and expense. Uh, those two things don't seem to be two terms that are that are exactly related. So I don't think it's D. And then E says direct or indirect. And again, those two terms kind of ring together. That sounds direct or indirect. Those are two terms that sound like they go together. So I'll keep that. We're at C and E. So let's go through this again. We're going to say direct costs in production are either C, salary or hourly, or E, direct or indirect. Now, the, the key here is that it's in costs in production. So if we're talking about the production costs, I think the more proper one, the one we're looking for, is either their direct or indirect, which is a little deceiving because probably this one sounds pretty reasonable too. Because how else do we pay people? Either salary or hourly. Uh, that would make sense, but that's not really applying. That's that's this is true for all payroll, really. I mean, we're paying people either on a salary basis or an hourly basis. It's not something that applies to cost of production, which we're talking about here. Cost of production. Uh, we're, we're typically trying to think of how we're going to apply this stuff out to jobs and either we're talking about labor that is directly related to a job or labor that is indirect. So given those terms, I think E is the one that we're looking for. So we have labor costs in production are either E, direct labor or indirect labor. And by the way, this is just one of those where you might see this and say, well, this, you know, this isn't technically wrong, possibly because uh there's and we could pay people some kind of hybrid between the between the two you know we can have different kind of payroll topics but you might say well this seems right uh, from a from a completely uh standpoint of it of it being true or not but this is one of those questions as many multiple choice questions are which will be we're looking for the most correct answer the, the one that fits the picture the most and so you're usually going to lose that argument <laughs> and you might as well try to go for the one that's going to be related to the to the topic we're we're working on next question a perpetual record of raw materials is a materials ledger card b materials requisition c purchase order d materials list g general ledger 
Let's go through this again using the process of elimination. A, a perpetual record of raw materials is either a materials ledger card. Now, if we if we hear that, we, we might think, well, that sounds like a thing. It sounds like a term, materials ledger card. So I'll keep that for now. Uh, B says materials requisition. And that should sound familiar too, but it doesn't really sound like a perpetual record. It sounds like a requisition is requesting. So it sounds like a request. It doesn't really sound like the perpetual record of inventory kind of as we go. So I don't think it's going to be B. C says purchase order. And that has to do with materials too, possibly, but that's really the request for us to purchase the materials from the vendor. So it's not really a perpetual record of our materials. That's the form that's going to tell the vendor, hey, we would like some materials, please. So I don't think it's going to be that one. D says materials list. Mm, that sounds kind of kind of reasonable. It's going to be a list of materials. Could be a perpetual per perpetual list of materials. And then E says the general ledger. Uh, the general ledger will be kind of a perpetual ledger in some case, but it's not really a, a subsidiary ledger, which we would think of that we would need for, for inventory. We would need the general ledger. Every account has a general ledger that gives the detail by date. What we really need is the detail by cost of inventory, tracking inventory items, and we need some kind of subsidiary ledger. So I don't think it's E. So let's go through this again. Uh, a perpetual record of raw materials is a materials ledger card or d materials list now of those two i think a <clears throat> is actually going to be the one a materials list sounds like it's just going to kind of list out the materials we have but what we really need is the cost of those materials as they go through the system so what we what we purchased what was still on hand versus what we have sold and the cost of those and this is the materials ledger card. It's going to be very similar to what we do in a merchandising company. And we might have to use a similar cost flow assumption, like first in, first out, last in, first out, average cost method. Uh, the only difference being that, you know, we're still using the purchase order. The inventory is still coming in to us in the same kind of similar process as with a merchandising company. But then, of course, we're not selling the inventory, but the inventory is still leaving the warehouse in a similar fashion. As with a merchandising company, it's just that it's going to the factory, to the production process, instead of to a customer at that time. So we have the same kind of issues with inventory that we would have, which a merchandising company tracking the inventory and finding methods to, to, to do that. Next question. The balance in the work in process inventory is equal to, once again, the balance in the work in process inventory is equal to A the sum of the costs for all jobs finished but not yet sold b raw materials used in production c the sum of costs for all jobs in process but not yet completed d the costs of all jobs started finished during the current period e says the sum of all materials labor and overhead costs paid during the period Okay, let's go through this again using the process of elimination. The balance in the work in process inventory is equal to either A, the sum of the costs for all jobs finished but not yet sold. It sounds kind of like it's possible, so I'll keep that for now. B says raw materials in production. Now, you might think, well, that's if they're in production, they're in work in process. So the raw materials are included in work in process, but the raw materials aren't going to be the balance of, of, of the work in process account because the work in process account includes everything that, that's going into the process, including raw materials, but also the factory overhead as we go and the labor. So this would just be one factor. It can't be that it can't be equal to them to the total. C says the sum of costs for all jobs in process, but not yet completed. So that sounds kind of reasonable. I'll keep that for now. D says the costs of all jobs started, I think it should be and finished during the current period. So a, a, the, the sum of the jobs that were both started and finished. Now, th this might be something that y if you looked at a process cost system, you might be that might start to ring like something that sounds familiar uh if you're using like a first in first out process cost system or something but it's not really 
something we do in, in a job cost. I mean, whether it was started and finished uh, during the same time period do doesn't necessarily tie out to the work in process. It's a permanent account, work in process, a balance sheet account. So it's not, it's not D. And then E says the sum of all materials, labor, and overhead costs paid during the period. And again, that might sound reasonable. I'll keep that for now. So let's go through this again. The balance in the work in process inventory is equal to either A, the sum of costs for all jobs finished but not yet sold. And note that that one's very similar to C, which says the sum of costs for all jobs in process but not yet completed. The fact that these two are very similar in, in the form makes could make us suspicious that one of those are going to be the answer as opposed to E that says the sum of all materials, labor, and overhead costs paid during the period. So of those three, I'm thinking that A or C are probably it, given the fact that they're, they're similar. It doesn't have to mean that they're it, but that's often the case. If the two answers are very similar with one, you know, kind of twist, then one of those are probably, possibly it a lot of the time. E says the reason this sounds good is because it has materials, labor, and overhead which are the three things that we kind of look for in the work and process account. The reason it's not correct is because it's cost during the period. And it's not necessarily the case. Work and process could, could go over the, th like it could be work and process. Some of the costs were there from last month. It's a permanent account. So it's not like work and process is gonna clear out at the end of the month, like, a, like an inventory or temporary or income statement account. So it doesn't necessarily need to be the case that these costs all happen during this period. And again, the reason this one might sound more familiar is if you have looked at a process cost system where we have instances in which we need to uh, look at costs that happen during a period. So it's not going to be E. So we're left with A and C. And between these two, we're looking for the, for the ones that are still in process. And that's going to be C the sum of costs for all jobs in process, but not yet completed. So if we add up all the jobs that we're still working on, they're still in process, they're not completed, then that should add up to the work in process amount on the trial balance. In other words, the trial balance represents all the open jobs, which are supported by the job cost sheets. All those job cost sheets then that we add up, which have not been done yet are these, as opposed to A, which is the sum of all costs for all jobs finished, but not sold. That would be the finished goods. So if we summed up all those jobs, they're done. That would be equivalent to finished goods, not work in process. So final answer, the balance in the work in process inventory is equal to C, the sum of the costs of all jobs in process, but not yet sold, but not yet completed.